Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm your host, Dr. Heather Shah. On behalf of Carlos, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we have another very interesting topic and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker who is going to talk about aiming for publication in reputed journals. An anatomy of a good research paper. How to prepare your paper for a good and reputed journal? What are the things you need to consider and how can you do it in a well manner? So indeed, a very interesting topic, and I'm sure in this session, you are going to learn so new things uh, as we have an expert with us today in this session. So stay tuned because an amazing stuff are coming ahead in this session. So before we start, I would like to thank Carlos for arranging such enlightenment sessions for their support and providing us such a wonderful platform. The aim of Carlos is to give you the opportunity to connect and interact with world-renowned speakers, academic leaders, teachers, authors, researchers, experts, professionals, and businessmen to learn from their experiences, recommendations, and suggestions, which will create an impact and will enable you to learn and develop yourself in order to grow and transform individually, as well as to contribute to the world in a positive way. As our slogan is, come, learn, and share knowledge. So today we have an amazing person as guest. He is an internationally known and recognized speaker, a multi-talented person with a great qualities, having vast experience and exposure across the globe. He is a great human being and always ready to contribute to the world in a different positive way. So let me introduce him formally. Uh, he is a, currently a chair professor and director of the Institute Innovation and Circular Economy in Asia University. He was a research fellow in the Institute of Applied Ecology at Chinese Academy of Sciences, China, 2012 to 2013 a visiting scholar at University of Derby, United Kingdom, 2015, adjunct distinguished professor UKM, Malaysia, 2019 to 2021, and honorary professor graduate business uh, school, uh, University Science, Malaysia, 2019 to 2023. He holds several adjunct professorships in Philippines, Malaysia, China, and Taiwan. Currently, he's an editor in chief uh, of Journal of Industrial and Production Engineering, Taylor and Francis, the Associate Editor of Management of Environmental Quality in International Journal, Emerald, Subject Editor of Sustainable Production and Consumption, elsewhere, and Editorial Board Member of Resources Conservation and Recycling, SCI, the Industrial Management and Data Systems, SCI, the Sustainability Journal, SCI. The Journal of Production Economics, again the SCI, etc. He also handled more than 20 special issues on sustainable consumption and production, topics in several SCI and SCI journals. He has a wonderful Scopus H Index 50, Global H Index 63, Google, and the 11 articles. Last but not the least, he is a wonderful speaker, author, teacher, researcher, professional, and above everything, a great human being. So please help me in welcoming our guest, Professor Dr. Mingling Singh. Welcome to the Calvas platform and thank you very much for joining us, Prof. Thank you. Yeah, it's really a pleasure to have you, Prof. And thank you very much for sparing uh, your wonderful time. Uh, let me just give uh, the reminder to the audience that Prof will be presenting and he would leave time for question and answer session at the end of the session. You can uh, ask by writing in comment section or you can email us at info at the rate of mm -hmm. So let's get started. Over to you, Prof. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the, the slides start to sharing. Yes, Prof. First slides and you are visible to our audience. Thank okay. you. Okay. So uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And thank you for the invitation uh, from Pakistan University. And the topic is aiming for publication in reputable journal, anatomy of a good research paper. And why come up with this topic? Because uh, um, the most important thing is how you learn a good research paper and then write a quality paper. My name is Ming Lang Cheng. I'm chair professor uh, Institute of Innovation and Circular Economy in Asia University, Taiwan. 
and I'm so also consultant in China Medical University. And you can see my Facebook here. And then if you are interested in my publication, you can join my Facebook, also the linking. Um, sorry. So my expertise actually is in industrial management. They call it production management, perhaps. And I, uh, for our center, we, we focus on uh, we 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 focus on uh, circular economy and green issues and supply chain issues, and then we do decision making and we also do some programming for uh, problem solving. And currently, my publication is about three hundred ten, and of course, within these days, I there are some papers keep on accepted, and every day my work is just. I'm struggling between accepted paper or rejected paper. Okay, so for past few years, my 310 papers, 80% published in Q1 journal, SCI, SSCI. So uh, Haider Shah already introduced my H index. I hope I can uh, increase this one and also share my knowledge to uh, international, communi uh, international community. And recently from the research.com, I'm ranking number seven in top engineering uh, and technology in Taiwan and also business management in Taiwan. And my adjunct professorship is in different countries. I think uh, Heather Shah already ex talked about this one, so I will not go detail. And my journal service, I'd like to um, share uh, those positions I hold in different journals. And the most important is my journal, Journal of Industrial and Production Engineering. So in this journal, uh, we quite focus on industrial engineering in different topics. And of course, so a while ago, Heather Shah asked me why Dex reject the paper. It's because of um, the quality of the paper itself. It's not, it's not because of the quality is not because of the topic. If your quality is good and then you are focused, you just in the scope of the journal, then usually we will send out for, for, for reviewing process. But the problem is you have to understand the journal. You have to read the journal, understand what is the form, what is the, what is the quality of the journal, then you can submit your work. And of course, uh, uh, every day, I'm um, also receive some submissions or uh, uh, reviewing invitation, reviewer invitations from different journals. And I also handle some special, I also handling some special issues. Um, currently, I think I still have uh, four special issues on hand. Didn't finish yet. So uh, every day I just read the paper, reject the paper or accept the paper. That's my daily work. And for the academic society, currently I'm the president of Chinese Institute of Innovation Management and Development. And I also join some uh, different international society, for instance, Asia Pacific Industrial Engineering and Management Society, and also International Foundation for Production Research in Asia Pacific region. And this year, end of this year, I'm going to host, I'm going to host uh, APM's conference in Taiwan and you can refer to the website, apms2022.org, and we put all the information there. I hope this pandemic will end up soon, so everybody we can gather and join together in our city, Taichung, in Taiwan, in the middle part of Taiwan. Um, why do we conduct the research right now? We go to the topic, why do we conduct the research? I think we need something, uh, we need something to understand why we have to do the research. And I put this one as an academic circle. Why? Because start with, we start to look at the academic circle from the university professor. Because uh, you are PhD or master student or university professor, and we are in different role, um, work in the academic circle. For instance, as you can see from the green one, okay, from the professor to the graduate study, and then we teach the student to the, we teach the graduate student how to do the research and also the undergraduate to think systematic thinking. That's very important for all the higher education. 
uh, students to learn what is the systematic thinking. And after you learn this one, then you can compose your thesis or a project and submit to your professor. But what is the most important things for the thesis is because of the innovation. So what is the innovative points for you to present or the problem for you to solve in order to reach the contribution? I think this is a very critical part for a thesis because while you read the thesis, if you don't have any contribution or you didn't have any innovative points, then you just read the paper while you write the thesis. And because of um, different professionals, so you can come up with international collaboration. For instance, my center, uh, we collaborate with different countries and uh, like Pakistan, like the UK, like China, like Japan, Korea, and United States, of course. And then we come up with the publication. And the most important, uh, a few days ago, student asked me, or a, a senior lecturer just asked me, why we do the publication? Because we wanted to have academic impact, social impact and economic impact. So he asked me, how can we come up with those impact? You can read from the Scopus and also the Palm X, then you will know what is the impact of your publication. So publication is no longer just publication. It just uh, present your idea and those people will read your paper and cite your paper. We call this one is a citation. So the university will come up with the university ranking and subject ranking. So more international students will come to the university to learn how to form the systematic thinking. And if you know how to form the systematic thinking, means that your university will be strong in publication and you will have a more innovative points for your paper, for people to learn and come up with the idea, how is the paper? Okay, so you have the citation and the citation here, you increase, if you have more citation, then you increase the journal impact factor and you will become high cite, highly cited authors. And from the citation, the university professor just keep on working and solving for the second circle, the industrial cases, or come up with the solution for specific product or industrial or, or, or production process. So you have the case. You solve the industrial case problem and you come up with a solution. The most important is the novel solution. So what is the, no, the solution in novel solution part? I read those papers for my past 20 years experience. Um, usually we do have theoretical, theoretical contribution, policy contribution, uh, industrial contribution or methodology contribution. So you have to hit the innovative part about your solution. Otherwise, as what I mentioned what ago, if you don't come up with the innovative solution, then you just refer to the paper or refer to the textbook, you will find the answer. <coughs> so as you can see from here, theory, method, policy and industry, that's the main contribution that you have to do the, you have to find what is the gap from the previous study. So you come up with the graduate study. So this one come, from my personal experience, this one comes up with the academic circle. And without, without this one, then without publication, then the university doesn't have any ranking. Without, you know, without innovative point, then thesis just for graduate. And without solving the industrial problem, then you are not possible to come up the new idea or teach the student what is the concurrent situation or what is the concurrent uh, industrial practice in the world or in your country. So you can share your knowledge to the world. That's why uh, in the very beginning, I just shared the academic circle is very important for uh, as we work in academia. Uh, next, for the contribution in different degree, for instance, like a bachelor, bachelor. So bachelor, usually they apply the knowledge to solving the problem. They only hit the industrial contribution. But if you go through the graduate study for the master or PhD or doctoral degree. The most important thing is that at least you have to hit um, theory or industry contribution or theory methodology contribution or industry contribution plus methodology contribution. That's why this is how we judge the paper. What is the innovative part? And then how do you hit the contribution? And 
there is no much difference between the master or PhD they do the thesis contribution. You have to find or what is the contribution of your papers. That's why this one will forms the graduate study. But for the whole higher education, we have to teach the student how to come up with the systematic thinking. And what is the systematic thinking? I think this is the major issue about the philosophy. And without the philosophy, then the student, the student might have problem to solve, to solve the real case. So uh, two years ago, I just read the paper and from the nature.com. Actually, I like this word, put the philosophy back to doctor of philosophy. So what is the philosophy? And there are many graduates from the doctor of philosophy or master of philosophy or master of science. They come up with a problem. They didn't have a systematic thinking. Actually, how I translate the philosophy and that's the systematic thinking. And the systematic thinking you can learn from the good research paper. That's why that comes, that's the idea we come arrive to this uh, lecture. And of course, the systematic thinking, we start to think that uh, from the input, output, input process and output. And what is the input? You have to come up with the data. So what is the data and what is the system? and what is the output and as you can see from here we we we, we read the papers or we read the textbook we we get the non information but the most important is from the system from the system itself we come up with the model approach we have to arrive what is the unknown information then this one we call is the innovative part and then comes up with the contribution and of course go through the output what is the accurate points that you are going to show to your readers and what is the unknown information that you're going to present in your papers and if you couldn't present this one then means that your paper cannot hit the contribution so uh, usually uh, i put in the process of the season maybe there is a hierarchical multi layers and or a model approach. It depends on what is the methodology that you're going to apply for in your data. But basically from the input process and output, I call this one is a systematic thinking. In reality, for those undergraduate, graduate students, they come to me, what is the major problem? <coughs> students come to me, they always tell me about their research plan. They come comes up with a very good abstract and makes sense. It comes up with a very good introduce, introduction and also very good objective. But the problem is, after they explain their idea, they ignore or they just uh, neglect about what is the evidence from the reference. So once they go through the process of the research, at the end of the result, you will see the result and discussion in this way especially for the PhD or master's students, higher education, because for the undergraduate, they usually come up with an applica application that would not comes up with a problem. But for the graduate student, they always comes up with end of the result and they are lacking to align all the chapters together. Why? Because uh, in chapter one and chapter two for the introduction and literature review, usually the student has a hard time to connect these chapters and come up with a very solid result in their discussion and also the conclusion. And what is the data analytics? For my experience, actually for the data in real world, right now is IoT Internet of Things. So there are huge of data comes in and then you have to find what is the system, what is the things that you're going to answer to your objective. So who, what, when, where, this is very important for you to arrive, what is the data information you're gonna have to tell your readers? And what is the really things that you're going to present? What is the unknown information to your readers? For instance, uh, for the past 20 years, like I just tried to arrange from the IPO, this is the input. Actually for the real world data, they are qualitative information, quantitative information and social media. And from the data arrangement, or we call data driven, 
okay? Then you can go through the season. So what is the season? What is the method that you might use for your study? And of course, for the data itself, is it interdependence or is it with a hierarchical structure or multi-layers that you have to consider in your analytical data? Okay, so from your analytical data, you comes up with the result. So what is the result? You may come up with a comparative analysis or come up with a sensitivity analysis to tell your readers what is the really things that you find through the data process or the data itself go through the process or the model and tell the readers what is the really things that behind that and what is the function for the model and what is the real data what is the real real things that you you're going to tell your readers that's why uh, you have to come up with a very solid research and which is uh, learning from the good research paper learn from systematic from the readings because you don't come up with the systematic thinking and then how do you write a good paper? How do you come up with a good paper? That would be a question mark. And then why I come up with a systematic thinking, for instance, I just give you two examples. And this one is my paper and just published, I think two, last year. Okay, the intention in use recyclable express packaging in consumer behavior and empirical study. And obviously, you can see the theoretical structure is here. It's a consumer behavior. So what is the intention in use? This is the product itself. Okay. So as a while ago, I explained to you, this is the case or this is an industrial problem. And this is a theory. And what is the methodology and empirical study? So from the title, obviously, we already very clear about what is the theory, what is the case, and what is the methodology. So based on this title, we have to align the title into the abstract. Then the, the way of you writing your abstract, you have to align into your introduction because the word is very small. If you are interested, you can just download the article. You will see how we align the title and the abstract and go to the introduction. And for this journal, the impact factor is 10 point something is in Q1. So uh, the problem is, Paper always based on the systematic thinking and what are those innovative points? And the most important is the reference, reference analysis. You have to come up with a very good reference analysis. What is the, to identify what is the gap for your study? For instance, another SCI paper, this one is published in Applied Soft Computing. So from the title again, developing a new Ensemble approach with multi-class SVM for Manuka honey quality classification. So as you can see, they develop something. This is uh, the result. And this is the methodology, multi-class SVM for Manuka honey quality. So this is the, the, the industry case. At the end, they're going to arrive the classification. So as, as a while ago, I explained to you, they try to develop something. So this is the end result from the methodology. So this one is contribute to the method and also to the industry. So what ago I explained to you, for the PhD student, you have to come up, the first paper is come up with a theoretical contribution and the industrial contribution. And for this paper, they come up with a methodology contribution and industrial or case contribution. So explain to you what ago, for those graduate student, you have to come up with a very solid contribution. But before how you arrive the classify the classification, and of course, we can just simply just read from the keywords. So the keywords you can see, not, not I just find out those students or young scholars, they just put whatever the keywords. Okay. But the most important is look at the keywords. SVM supported uh su support vector machines and then high back stream imaging. You can see, oh, how do they come up with the classification is from here. So honey quality, that's the case. Uh, hierarchical learning, oh, that's a methodology. Ensemble is also the methodology. So you will see from here. Actually, from the keywords, from the title, reading the abstract, everything is tied up together. I call this one, it's a systematic thinking. And then I call this one, Obviously, that's the contribution already stated 
in the title keywords and also the app shop. And from the introduction, as you can see from here, Manuka Honey, so the industrial application for the methodology is Titan and is link. And there are so many students always come to me, ask me how, to, how can I speed up the publication? I say, sorry, I don't know what is the secret. Even I publish that many papers every year. Last year, I published almost 60 papers. And this year so far, I do have a 30 paper accepted for publication. And it's, of course, it's not me. It's because of the research team. I have a research team in my center. And I using the same, uh, same uh, PowerPoint. Uh, the difference is we try to break down what is the major things that we have to get from the reference. And then how do we translate the reference to come up with a systematic thinking? That's the way I always teach the young scholar, also the student, how to justify what is the contribution. And of course, you have to solve a valid problem. So what is a valid problem? A valid problem is comes up with the theoretical base, methodology, methodology base, and case base. And this one will lead to a solid research. But the real, the real problem is, the real problem is the literature review. Because if we don't come up with a very good literature review, then you will have the problem to explain the idea, for instance. In the stage one, I always assign a student a research topic. So from the research topic, the students start to collect, all the young scholars start, start to collect for the past five years in the same field. And of course, stage two, they have to collect within 10 years. And what happened with the specific topic of the knowledge? And of course, they have to follow the form to come up with the study for each one of the article and try to justify through this introduction method and findings and fill the form and attach this form into the specific article. Then I will check and then I will ask them to present the papers. And then in order to understand what is each paper talking about, what is the real things behind the article. So uh, in my class, uh, usually I request a student to study five articles in a week. And actually it's one day, one article, then you have to explain that very well. And of course, I also keep my time for my student. If I'm, I'm not traveling overseas and then the student, they can come to me anytime to ask what is the main problem. And then I have to solve the problem for the students. So uh, the problem is the literature review. So how do you find the good articles? Usually I ask a student to, to, to download the article from, of course, those good journal articles. And then most of the time the student doesn't know what is the good journal. So I ask them to download from Elsevier or Emera Springer. That's considered the world biggest and second, third uh, database or pub public uh, publisher. So what is the systematic thinking framework? Actually, um, everybody is familiar with this one. Everybody is writing the papers with this structure. But the problem is how come your paper always be accepted? My paper always be accepted or be, be rejected. That's the problem because what ago I show you, because you didn't tighten the chapters or you didn't come up with a very good debate and contribution or you didn't come up with a, the, the way of how we write the literature review and deeper the debate. And the students sometimes ask me, just like a few days ago, I talked to Malaysian, uh, Malaysian uh, uh, Sarawak University. I, I, I forget what is a university. They asked me a question. So what is the good method? I say, once you can solve the problem, it's a good method. Then they ask me, uh, how come I, I, I use PRS and then partial D square? And is that the good method for publication? I say, I, I, my answer is in this way. So what is the case or what is the things that you're going to solve? If you wanted to come up with the theoretical structure, of course, PS. But if you wanted to solve the industrial case, you come up with the cause effect relationship. So what is the purpose? The problem is you have to use the right tool, right things for your research paper. So you can just fit everything into into your method. If you decided to use 
or you learn, you are in college of management, you learn the partially square, of course, your discussion will based on the theoretical structure, very strong debate, very good hypothesis in your literature review. Otherwise, you know, you will get a problem about, about your discussion. So not, there is no specific tool that they say you have to, you have to use that for the rest of your life. Of course, it's a learning process. I always, I'm also learning. And then I always adopted the new methodology. For instance, the student, they come to me, they, they, they try to develop or they learn something new and we can discuss together because uh, I'm 50 something. So, so sometimes, you know, I also don't have time to learn that. I also learn from my students. So this structure actually is very good for students to, to, to use. And then if you read my publication for, you can just search on the website, Ming Lang, Ming Lang Cheng, my Chinese, my Chinese name. And then you will see a lot of 310 publications. And then I always use this structure. I didn't use different structure from my publication. And all the students, I ask them to use this one. Unless you are already very strong, then you are in different disciplines. For instance, some engineering students, they try to merge the introduction and literature review. And in, the, in my journal, I always ask them to come up the introduction and literature review in separate sections. And then you have to come up with a discussion to discuss what is the really things that you contribute in the field in terms of the knowledge, theoretical methodology, or the case, or the policy contributions. So uh, goes back to the contribution and problem. In the other way around, for reading the papers, Still, you have to understand what is the paper, come up with the contributions. What is the paper's problem? Come up with the paper contribution. You write the paper, this one will become your research problem versus to your contribution. So before you start to write the paper, you have to learn how to read the paper first. And all over the world until now, I read the papers. And then there, there is nothing exception from these four contributions. Even uh, I also work with some people from the uh, from uh, college of college of science. They they are more focused on the methodology and industrial case. It's the same from the engineering. So learn the writing, and then before you learn how to write, you have to learn how to read first. So reading the article, you have to clearly answer what is the research problem, what is the thesis contribution first. And of course, uh, I travel to Malaysia, Philippines, and different countries. And I also meet some uh, senior lecturer um, with, with, with my same age. They always ask me, because I'm the consultant of the company, can you tell me what is the theory things? And I just show them the academic circle. Because without the theory, Without the proper modeling the knowledge, how can you educate your student? And second, from this point, from the title, paper title, as why while ago I show you the systematic about the two examples of the paper, the title, the theory, that comes up with a debate. And from the theory to, to those dimension or the aspect that comes up with a debate. So in chapter one, you have to properly explain what is the theory things that versus to your title. And of course, if you're using some, some uh, like industrial management methodology, you have to properly explain why the method is very important for your study and what is the advantage. And of course, you have to solve the industry issue or case or government problem. So um, from this point, we call this one is the practical contribution. From this point, we call this one is a theoretical contribution. But of course, if you can find some new way to increase the efficiency or effectiveness of specific things, that, that's the methodology plus the practical contribution. So from this table that I explained to some senior lecturers, without this one, then you will get a problem about your paper because you are not proposing a new methodology, you only do the practical contribution as what ago I explained to you. That's only for the undergraduate student. They only do the industrial contribution. You are not qualified as a PhD. And a few days ago, 
there is one PhD. I, I don't know if he is newly graduate. He asked me a question. And of course, I, I, I'm also very happy to answer the question, but I asked him next time, don't, don't ask this kind of question. Why? Because he asked me, why we have to do the publication? Why, why the publication is important? How do we uh, come up with the impact, social impact, academic impact, uh, eco economic impact or policy impact? So from the different database in Scopus, if you see from the right hand upper side, there is SCI bar, you will see the academic impact, econ uh, economic impact. So if you go to the pump X, you will see your, 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 your policy impact. So <coughs> there are different database comes up with different impact. For, so you will see your chart, your paper, what is the citation from government agent or from the academic papers or from the patent itself to comes up with the economic impact. So um, I, I, I do feel that the, that PhD uh, professor or senior lecturer, he tried to deny himself. Okay, so we don't deny ourselves. We just have to show the students, you know, why we have to come up with a publication. And publication is not the publication. Publication actually is the result of systematic thinking. Actually, publication is the end story that you finish everything that about your project, then you comes up with the publication. So publication is not that important. The problem is how you solve a valid problem to come up with a conclusion and then comes up with a very meaningful uh, theoretical structure and also uh, all methodology, methodology contribution. Of course, you have to hit the real case. And next slide, <coughs> why I comes up with a mind mapping? Because actually for this structure in undergraduate, uh, in undergraduate, we teach that as a mind mapping. The difference of the mind mapping is the references. So for the, un for the graduate student, you have to really find something to support your mind mapping, your structure, okay? That's very important for you to complete this structure without the reference, then without the evidence, how do you prove your contribution? And if you cannot prove your contribution, you tell me this is my innovative point. So how do you prove the innovative point? So that's a question mark. You cannot just base on your sense or based on your knowledge or whatever you read from the Google. Okay, because uh, some students come to me, they read the knowledge or download the paper from the Google. They say, this is the very solid contribution from the Google. I said, no, 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 sorry, sorry. I want to see very academic work, for instance, from reputable journal and, and from some uh, good, good journal article, then we can justify what is your contribution. So uh, all the students or even the PhD, you want to call yourself as an expert. So the papers in the field, you must be very, very, uh, very familiarized and then very strong. Uh, what is the knowledge all over the world? So this is very important for the student to, to, to collect uh, the reference in your field. So again, theory need to support what is the practical in the industry. And of course, we have to summarize what is the theory things that we really apply to the industry as the academic circle. So we teach the student not only practical in the industry, we also have to summarize what is the real things that the knowledge behind that, that's very important for, for for as an uh, academician, for as us, we teach the student. So without a debate, without a debate, then without a contribution, that's the real things that in 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 our publication. So uh, usually for my center, I comes up with a research chain. So what is a research chain for for my center? Usually every year, or if I comes up with a new topic. I, I always comes up with the trend. So this one, this trend will comes up with a very good citation of your paper because if you see the straight line in this one means that the, there are only very limited research on this field. So for the past 20 years, I always uh, work on the, on the sustainability, circular economy issues all over the world. 
So if you see my publication, there are so many things about the sustainable uh, sustainability issues. So you can see the upper trend. That's why the citation will increase a lot in recent years. So uh, recent publication, because the student wants to understand what is the circular supply chain practices, what is the challenge or opportunity. So we just get the we just get all the data from the Scopus Web of Science and comes up with the, with the research. We call this one a data-driven hierarchical circular supply chain structure published in Business Strategy and the Environment, the impact factor is 10 point something. So this is only to confirm the student what is the research trend and understand what is the challenge and opportunity. And from this one, the student can continue to do the work or even a young scholar, you can continue for your work for the next few years. And then as, as you can see from the voice viewer, and some students, they just use the voice viewer to come up with what is a research opportunity. I think this is not good enough right now because for this for this one is developed for, ten, for a few years ago. So I just asked a student to come up with what is the real practice in the industry, uh, e-waste, uh, material, material efficiency, and waste to energy, plastic, recycling, artificial intelligence, machine learning. That's the top keywords practice practical practice in the industry. And then what we do come up with the cluster analysis. So as you can see, we do the cluster, the resource recovery efficiency implementation. That's very important for you to apply the circular supply chain. So what is the resources? I think this is already answered the circular economy. The resources first and the technology is here, industrial 4.0 and digitalization. And comes up with the reverse supply chain practice. And this one already answered what is the circu circular supply chain in the field. So uh, that's the trend. So what is the innovative point for SCI and SSCI journal? The answer is anatomy of a good research paper. So from the, what I, got, I explained to you, the problem is in the theory, in the methodology, in the industry, or in the in the policy. So justify the problem first and what is the support for the problem, which is the gap of the study. So again, the problem versus contributions. This is very important for all the, all, all the young scholars. And uh, I think right now all over the world, everybody's talking about the innovation, okay? So the innovation included the process, product management innovation or whatever the innovations. So without a debate, how do you come up with the innovation? And you do come up with the innovative part. You don't come up with a solution. So this is only proof that the systematic thinking is very important for you to arrive what is the innovation. And without the research, then there is no innovation. So. I'm just wondering for those uh, lecture they teach innovation in the textbook. So how do they prove that without the research? How do you prove the innovation? That's my question mark. So um, just show you how do I request the student. Um, this is the paper and this is what I got. I show you the three columns, introduction, method and findings. So the most important for improving research capability is view from the debate, contribution and findings. You have to put these three always together. So uh, that's very critical for students to learn. And of course, this presentation just like a summarize that let you know what is the important things for you to do the research. Research is not only the research, it's not only for the publication. It's about the systematic thinking. And without, a, without, without this research, and then of course, without the innovation. So the innovation, you have to stand in look at the past and then benefit to the future. That's very critical. And of course, lastly, I would like to thank you for your invitation. And I think I spent 40 minutes to complete my presentation and thank you. So uh, we just uh, return the floor back to uh, Heather Shah. Yes, super prof, uh, wonderful presentation. And it was a real anatomy of the research paper. What a start uh, you have given the wonderful uh, explanation. I would say the academic cycle was so great, the two cycle. And this is the most important question, how our research publication 
have the implication towards the society and particularly the uh, industry. Most of the time we are asked that what, what you have mentioned in a couple of times that, uh, yes, what, what is the actual importance of the publication in the societal level, economic level and other, which is very important question. I believe uh, you have addressed it in a very fantastic manner that uh, in so multiple places you were just quoting and that was a wonderful thing. I loved your images proffer, which was so powerful, which was so, uh, I would say, self-explanatory because uh, I love the horse uh, image, which was wonderfully uh, portraying the message of that. Uh, you take the idea, you come up with a wonderful title and the introduction, the abstract, but certain things happen in the methodology section, the analysis. And we don't see the same thing as connected to the discussion level and the implication level. Uh, and very nice suggestion you have given. And I would say very fantastically, you have mentioned the analogies, different analogies. And I love your another uh, image that was the literature review. Most of the time, Prof, in my uh, classes, I used to tell my students that, uh, in my own opinion, the research starts and ends with literature review. And I loved your phrase that, uh, yes, uh, in order to write, you have to read first. I love that sentence. And really, that's the wonderful and very powerful sentence you have given. And another phrase of yours, I love that uh, uh, is, uh, the uh, publication uh, actually is the outcome of the systematic thinking. Yes, indeed, uh, systematic thinking will lead to the innovation and to lead to the uh, problem solving and having the real implication. And I love your paper construction uh, um, image, uh, the slides, which was so powerful. I think the whole presentation was so captivating that uh, I was looking every information and I was just thinking that uh, uh, I was not that uh, the fortunate that uh, I could have this kind of presentation during the start of my PhD or my master's. If uh, I had the opportunity, it would have been much better because it was so enlightenment sessions. And I hope our audience, they would have learned a lot because uh, what of uh, experiences you have shared. And that's the beauty because you yourself are the editor. And since you have your own multiple publication of very reputed journals, and again, your, uh, what, uh, your recommendations are very important for our uh, audience to learn from. Uh, really very powerful content and uh, what a wonderful explanation you have given. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, if you yes, allow me, should we start? Yeah, should we start with the first question, please? Okay. Okay. So the first question, Prof, uh, as you are an editor, they want your opinion. They say that, Prof, uh, as an editor, please share your opinion. Should we email to editor after our paper is a desk rejected? for justification to reconsider our paper. What is your recommendation to us? Yes, please. Okay, usually the paper being tax reject. The first is not within the scope of the journal, of the journal, that's a very critical. Second is the poor quality. So uh, that's why um, what ago, during my presentation, I'm very strongly uh, advocate what is a systematic thinking. If you don't come up with very clear about your logical flaw in the paper and very strong the information delivered to your readers, then the, the, the editor will consider that paper with less contribution. For instance, like this morning, I reviewed the one paper. Actually, uh, everything is quite well, but the, the, the writing skill is very, very poor. So as a reviewer, I'm not editor. If I'm editor, I will give a chance. But as a reviewer, then I'll reject the paper. So the different position, we comes up with different consideration. So text reject and two reasons. So what I got already answer, you have to really state what is your contribution based on what gap or what is the debate? What is the things? Then, and of course, from the two case of the papers, uh, from the title, from the keywords, from the way of you writing the abstract, you already emphasize what is the debate and what is the contribution of your paper. Then the editor will not text reject your paper. I'm so sure. 
but of course, of course, and sometimes, sometimes the editor will also find out that this kind of topic has too many papers in their journal. They also will tend to reject that paper. So it depends. And of course, uh, as an editor, because our journal, we don't have a huge volume of the, of the submissions. Last year, we have 440. So each paper goes through my hand. I will read the paper. So uh, once I read the paper, I make the comparison of the paper and try to understand what is the background of the paper. But for instance, if your title is Mr. and then you don't, don't uh, come up with your advisor, then we, we see we see something that you are not well experienced on writing the paper, then we will read the paper very careful. So uh, there are some cases that the graduate student just submit the paper by themselves. Usually that's what we consider we will reject that kind of paper. Yeah. So yeah. I hope I answer your question. The three. Yes, very nicely, and wonderful recommendation you have given as an editor because you have that wonderful experience. And very nicely, you have started with the scope of the uh, journal, which is very important for our students to learn from. Uh, they have another very interesting question. Again, uh, they want to have your opinion as an editor. Uh, they say that, Prof, please guide us as an editor. Please share your opinion. Does comparative study is more important as compared to the journal empirical studies? What is your take on that? Yes, please. Okay. So empirical study, uh, usually you comes you comes up with the theoretical model, and theoretical model usually you only fulfill the gap of your hypothesis. For the comparative study, usually uh, for the engineering paper, they they usually comes up with the comparative study because you don't have the ba the baseline to compare, so you compare with other studies, and some. If you cannot do the comparative studies, then you do the sensitivity analysis about a situation. That's also acceptable for, for a, a good paper. So that depends on the situation. You know, what is the paper objective? That's why you need a, a experienced, strong advisor to get, to guide you how to, how to compose a good paper. I think that's very critical. Thank you. Yes, bro. thank you very much. And we have another very interesting question from one of the uh, audience. They want to ask that his first question is, uh, how important are the suggested reviewers for our manuscript? It may influence the decision making. Yes, Prof. Some journals, they ask for the suggested reviews. Yes, please. OK, situation one. Um, usually, if, if the paper, if the paper, we, do, we couldn't find you are very strong you are the very strong uh, authors from the international community. We are not considered to use your suggested reviewer. Okay, that's a very critical because we need you to fulfill uh, our database of reviewers. And that's a number one. Second, and of course, if you your suggestion uh, for those reviewers, they are very strong in international community, then we will accept that. And most of the time we don't use that. Because right now in the in our season, uh, in our season, there are many reviewers we we'll recommend by the by the season, and then some uh, reviewers from the same country they'll just show in red colors. Oh, this one is your co-authors. They will show in red colors. So season right now will suggest the reviewers for us. So it's very convenient. That depends on that depends on you know what is the situation. But of course, suggest reviewer, that's very important. And for the last week, if we really cannot find the proper reviewers, we will use yours. Yeah. Yes, very nice. That's the reason the expert gave a wonderful explanation so that the doubts could be removed properly. So we have uh, the same uh, another question from the same gentleman, and they want to ask that what knowledge or innovation one should possess in order to publish in a Q1? Because since you have a uh, multiple publication in Q1 journal, so just uh, if you could give some tips quickly to that gentleman, yes, please. Uh, I already give you the answer a while ago. Actually, it's a systematic thinking. You have to write the paper very clear. 
and you can publish in a good journal. Okay, I, I actually for myself, I'm also struggling between the accepted, rejected because most of the paper I submit to the top quality, top Q1 journal, and based on my experience, okay, I don't I don't look for I don't look for the connections. I always based on the paper's quality. So what is the quality? So sometimes I just, after finish the paper, I just put the paper in the drawer and think it one time, two times, three times, after, after a couple of days, then I will come up with the idea, you know, what is the structure of the paper? And then how do I, you know, match the, the journal's requirement? I think uh, you need a strong advisor, experienced advisor help you to do that. That's why uh, sometimes, you know, for some young faculty members, they just uh, come to me and I just, uh, they may think a few days, then I'll tell you what is the answer and which journal is better for, for our publication. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Very nicely said. Thank you once again, bro. The way you are answering is so wonderful and I'm enjoying your answers. And uh, uh, this is the beauty even at this level uh, you just said that uh, you get the acceptance and rejection as well. So that is the motivation for our upcoming researcher that uh, if a prof like you can have a rejection, so we can also have a rejection, it's normal part. And uh, this is what we usually refer as uh, through our mistakes, we learn and we grow. And you should learn from your mistakes. That's the wonderful message we have given again to the, our audience from around the world. Uh, another question they want to ask from you as a supervisor that prof uh, please share your experiences how many publications should a phd student have by the time they graduate yes please okay uh, actually in my center for a phd student in three years time uh, for the past few years all my phd student at least six papers uh, in three years, that's very, that's very general and very normal for a PhD student because if you come to the, you come to our, our 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 center, then starting from the direction and then I'm not allow you to change the topic. That's just like what ago you collect the data, the the reference within five years and then ten years. Then we discuss what is the trend. Then you continue to deeper the problem, deeper the topic then there is no problem for you to publish six top journal. I, I think that's no problem because based on my past experience, they always publish a lot. And the most good student, okay, uh, three years, about 15 articles. Because he is very focused. He's, he's from Vietnam. And then he just stay in the lab every day from morning up to evening because he want to find a good job. Then of course he published fifteen articles within three years in PhD. Then right before he graduate, he already find a very good job in good university. So uh, I always tell them that you know writing a paper or you get a you you get a good data from the data source solving a very valid uh, problem that, that 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 is your future that is your career so writing a paper is not only for publication it's also your career that's very important as a phd student that's why um uh i do have uh, some exchange student from malaysia from philippines from different countries come to come to my center and for uh, six months for one year and for the six months, usually the student, um, I always ask them, do you have to finish the paper within four months? Then of course, they can come up with a good publication. Always, always. Very so, nice. So that's how I training my, my, my PhD student. Yeah, very nice, Prof. And it's really great to hear your views on that. And I think that's why they are performing very well. You give them a wonderful direction and challenge as well. And I think uh, your wonderful suggestion that uh, it's their career and they should take it very seriously and they should be doing it in a very productive manner. 
Uh, another question, Prof. Uh, nowadays, if there is a hot debate regarding this uh, question, which this uh, gentleman has asked. Uh, they said that, uh, Prof, there is a mixed opinion regarding the authorship number. Uh, does a single author paper is considered to be more good for the field as a researcher? Uh, there should be having at least three to four authors in one single paper in order to get the diverse opinion and diverse expertise to have a better quality work. What is your personal opinion on that? Yes, please. Okay, I only can tell my experience. Okay. Uh, when I was young, I newly graduated from a PhD. I always call authors with some senior professor because I need some suggestion from them. And then until I promoted to associate professor, then uh, I start to have my single authors. So what I promote to full professor, I, I have a lot of single authors. Okay. But now I don't have any single authors because I, 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 I always collaborate with, uh, for instance, Bangladesh, India, uh, UK, United States, and some other countries, scholars. Then I want to build a network together, then, you know, solve the issues together. Why? Because um, for like myself right now, I, I think uh, I am a researcher, but up uh, the role of myself, I'm more on, uh, more on in the academic community to work together. How do I bring the people together and work together? That's very important as as the as the service as a mission for. I feel that's for my life, and I'm I'm 52 years old, and uh, right now uh, I just try to bring you know because uh, from a Taiwanese uh, mind and Chinese. And some uh, foreign has Pakistan. Maybe you come up with a different idea about the different knowledge that I want to merge the knowledge together. This is what I'm doing. So uh, I will advise for those young scholars. You always comes up with your senior professor to help you to come up with more idea and make the per the paper more perfect. And of course, for those young scholars, you also learn from the senior. And after some day, you become senior. Then you will deliver the message, deliver the knowledge to the young generation. We call this is generation to generation. And of course, and after uh, we have uh, some four professor to work together and then you will become editor. Okay. Once you become editor, then you can just like what doing what I'm doing now, because all my friends, for instance, we have many editors together. This is, we have a com very common missions and then we bring the people together to share the knowledge together in a specific platform. The platform is the journal. Then this is what we are doing. And then we also bring the people to the conference and then we come up with the discussion and we get people to know each other and come up with a good paper. The good paper, we help them to publish in our journal, in, in our different journals, then we will feel happy or not. And then once that paper get very high citation with a very strong impact, then I'm happy to serve as an editor. Yeah, that's, that's the academic circle. Very nicely said, Prof. A very wonderful answer to that. And I loved again your phrase that it's the, uh, from generation to generation and we have to pass it and we learn from our seniors. That's the wonderful thing. And we look for their guidance, for their directions because they are ahead of us and they have gone through such a wonderful experiences. Their experiences can help us a lot. And they actually can tell us the how to carry out research in a systematic way, which you have already mentioned a couple of times in your presentation. Yeah. Very nice answer, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, there is one another important question in terms of uh, ethical point of view. Uh, this uh, student wants to ask that, uh, should we cite the original article or the paper we are reading? It means, is it ethical to in which uh, article you have studied to reference that paper? Or should we go back to the original source and give the reference of that? Yes, Prof. Please. Yeah, definitely. We always back to the original article. You cannot use the second citation that's very dangerous for your career so uh usually 
<coughs> those papers cited in your reference, I would suggest you, you know, at least you have to download and understand what's what's their mind and read the article. That's very important. We don't use this the second level citation. That's very dangerous. Okay, that's my answer. Very nice, uh, Prof. Uh, one last question, which is again related to the editor, because most of the students they want to ask regarding the publication and your editor experience is so great for them. Uh, they want to ask that, uh, Prof, uh, as an editor, please give us the guidance that uh, sometimes uh, uh, while submission, uh, they give us the uh, different reviewers, couple of reviewers, two, three reviewers. And once we see their uh, comments, they are uh, sometimes contradictory to one another. So in that case, what to do? And should we write to the editor in special column that uh, these two uh, uh, reviewers have the diverse opinion regarding the same thing. So what to do? Do you recommend this kind of practice or should we incorporate it because it will be self-contradictory in the paper? Yes, please. Okay. First, we have to know that reviewer is a volunteer work. Okay. Whatever opinion they give to you is based on their mind and they are expert in the field. Okay. So um, usually if the reviewer didn't give the very good comments, then you should say thank you. You never point the back of the reviewer, say he's very bad, he's very poor or whatever. I never do that. And <coughs> there is a time, my paper is only 40 pages, but my, 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 my rebuttal papers is more than 90 pages. So can I say the review is no good? I, my, in my heart, I only say that the reviewer give more challenge and wants to make the paper, the paper more perfect. So I'm very grateful. And then although you write 94 pages, that's very hard and very difficult. But once you go through the process, then you, you know, means that you grow up again. So uh, I, I would not encourage any one of you to write to the editor about a reviewer. Sometimes if that is not, the reviewers is come up with a reasonable, irreasonable opinions, then I would suggest you just say thank you. And then your, your uh, comments is fruitful for the, for the paper. However, and then try to explain gently and polite, very polite way. Okay, that, that will benefit to you. And then the reviewer will not get angry. And then the editor will feel happy on that. But if you create a problem for the editor, you create a problem for reviewers, then the problem finally will go back to yourself. So don't do that in my experience. I never do that. Okay, I always come up with a very polite and then uh, try to console again. And I sometimes my paper goes to R7, revi re revision, version seven. So, uh, so uh, I think this is very important. We don't point the back of the reviewers because uh, the editor they send out to the reviewers. There must be some reasons for him to send to the reviewer. But I would suggest, this is my experience, I suggest don't do that. Okay? Yeah. But of course, you can follow up your paper. If the time is too long and you follow up to the editors, the editor will reply. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Prof. Very nice suggestion you have given. Certain uh, In certain uh, cases, uh, we have uh, come to know that uh, people have written to the editors that your reviewers is not good and something like that, which <laughs> you, you have very nicely mentioned that it will come back to you. Whatever you do, it will come back to you, and which is not recommended and ultimately which is not good as well. And in academics, we teach the mannerism and the things and we tell them that please accept the criticism as a constructive mask. Try to do it in a positive way. That's the wonderful thing. So a really prof wonderful explanation and powerful content which you have uh, shared with us was so great. And uh, we definitely recommend you to the our audience that please follow your work, uh, research work, and they can email you for future learning and guidance. Uh, 
since you are very generous and wonderful person. Uh, Prof, at the end of the session, we ask our each guest that what is your message to the world as a speaker, teacher, researcher, trainer, learner, professional, and educator? Yes, please. Just uh, do your contribution to the world. Okay, that's all. Wow, Prof, wow. What a wonderful message you have given to the world. And it is just like you have squeezed the ocean uh, in a just drop and you have given the wonderful explanation wherever you are, whatever you do, you must have a contribution back to the world, to the society for upcoming yeah. generation. And we must live in a wonderful planet. And, and what we can do is to, uh, we can do it by sharing our knowledge so that other people can learn. Uh, very nicely uh, uh, given the message to the world, Prof. Uh, so I, in, in the last, I would say that, yes, sir, the prof has already explained uh, through a wonderful explanation and a powerful content. Uh, I hope you would learn, uh, you would have learned a lot from this session. And for any further information, uh, you can email him for uh, further guidance and for uh, further learning as well. He is very generous and ready to help the people. Uh, moreover, I would like to thank uh, uh, prof, prof for your wonderful time, energy, and for wonderful uh, experiences which you shared with us for your precious time as well. Uh, that's all we have time for today. Thank you all for your support and liking our sessions. Stay tuned as many sessions are on the way. Please do not miss any session. Until next session, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.